for YouTube. Team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video and another episode of NFL Questions from Subscribers, which is a series where you can ask me any NFL question you want to based off of any NFL team, and we answer it in a video just like this. Now, if you want to be part of NFL Questions from Subscribers, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com, or for the patrons, you can send it to me directly on Patreon. And I mean, speaking of the patrons, shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean patrons! We love y'all and we appreciate y'all. Now, this is a very special episode of NFL Questions from Subscribers because I have a very special guest. Well, guests, plural. And I, I just, I've been watching that channel for a while now. Um, and I just really love their energy. I really love their vibe. Uh, and I can tell that they just, they enjoy what they do. And that's super important, uh, especially being in an avenue like this. So let's go ahead and introduce the fellas from Trust the Bank. So team, keep it clean. Uh, introducing to you, Trust the Bank. Fellas, go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Hey, what's going on, Ravens family? It's your boy Joshua um, from uh, Trust the Bank podcast. Um, 27 years old, coming out of Baltimore, Maryland. Been a Ravens fan since the first time we won a championship, man. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, definitely um, thankful for the opportunity to be on the show. And you know, give y'all, give y'all y'all give a give y'all our takes, and I'm um, looking forward to this new season. So let's get to it. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, I'm Akana. Um, I obviously part of the Trust the Bank podcast. I also do the other videos on TTB Ravens Media. Um, help found um, undrafted sports um, and, and do all that stuff. Uh, more than just Ravens stuff, but obviously big time Ravens fan from the West Coast. Uh, live in the West Coast. Um, one day I'll one day I'll get out to to Baltimore and finally be able to go to a game there. I've only ever been to games on the West Coast. Now, how how did y'all? I mean, I'm assuming from a little bit of Lamar, a little bit of Mark Ingram, a little bit of M and T Bank Stadium. How did but how did y'all come up with the name Trust the Bank? Oh man, um, I'll let you go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we I, re, I we met through Twitter and we were kind of just trying to come up with a name and. We were just kind of messaging around and that was we started it probably right around the time you know it was the whole big trust thing with mark ingram it was mm -hmm. probably a a week after that was when we started the podcast or started trying to figure it out so yeah. all we all we had in our mind was you know uh meet me outside the bank um come <laughs> see me uh all that yeah. type of stuff from mark ingram and we were like you know what about what about you know you know we took trust and we took uh, the bank from obviously m t bank uh, and we decided to to just roll with it. So, cool, man, cool. And I did see y'all hit a thousand subscribers a couple of weeks ago. So congratulations on that. And Thank um, you. like like I said earlier, I I, I really uh, appreciate y'all channel because I see y'all have a, a really good time on the channel. Y'all have fun on the channel. Y'all enjoying what y'all do. Um, but about what y'all do, what what made you do it? Why did y'all start the podcast up? Oh man. Um. So <laughs> I. I did another podcast before um, Trez the Bank, and it started right, really, like, we had plans to do it before um, mm -hmm. 2020, but, like, we started it up, like, January 2020, um, and then we were talking, and I, I was kind of, my co-host is a 49ers fan, and he was like, you know, we all we talked about was 49ers and Ravens, it's supposed to be, like, all football, and we were like, <laughs> man, we got to figure out a way to talk about these teams a lot, but without doing it, so we all, so we both decided, we both started our own, uh, we both just decided to try out and go start our own thing. So that's when yeah. I found Joshua. Uh, and that was, I don't know when it was. It was probably uh, like the summer. Summer so, last year. Yeah. Yeah, it may have been <laughs> summer last year. It was it was a while ago. Um, and it was just a podcast. And, uh, you know, we just decided to have a lot of fun with it. Honestly, we weren't too consistent with it. So for the people that actually stuck around and, and listened to it, um, it was great. But then we just decided, like, Hey, let's let's actually do this. Let's uh, start trying to be really consistent, post on YouTube, and, and do all that stuff. And that's that's kind of how it was born. But yeah, cool man. And yeah, that the consistency that's everything. Cause I see y'all literally post videos every single day. Um, so if y'all want daily videos from Trust the Bank, if you want daily Ravens videos, then y'all subscribe to their YouTube channel. It's going to be down below in the description. Uh, what is your Twitter for everybody asking? Basically, the Ravens Twitter, the TTB account is at TTB underscore Ravens is the mm -hmm. Twitter account. All right, cool. So as y'all have been doing the podcast, what would you say is your favorite thing about it? I, I, I'll go ahead. 
Um, I would definitely say, you know, being able to talk about something you love, um, um, not searching for content. I mean, content is literally there, especially in the sports world. Mm -hmm. So being able to, you know, talk about your favorite sports team, talking about the ins and outs, you know, um, and, and the networking, like, honestly, you know, being able to, you know, do joint shows with other people that, you know, like the Ravens or even yeah. maybe even um, a Steelers fan or possibly mm -hmm. um, a Kansas City Chiefs fan, you know, those those shows, those episodes, it definitely brings out the best of you. So, yeah. you know, I'll definitely say networking, being able to talk about something that you, you know, you truly love and truly passionate about because, you know, you find the real in people. You don't find the, you know, everyone putting on their news voice. Hey, how you doing? No, <laughs> you get that, you get that, you know, you get that rawness, you know, yeah. so, you know, definitely. I definitely say, you know, that's, that's the main reason I love podcasting, especially um here with, uh, the, with the Ravens uh, uh, content. Yeah. I like that. I like that answer, man. That's true. And because uh, this, what a, a lot of us do on here, like with YouTube and stuff, while we do try to have a, a professional aspect to it, with it being on YouTube and like it literally being YouTube, like so it's your videos, how you want to do them. Mm -hmm. You could just be yourself on them. You ain't got to be, oh, hey, hi, hello, how's it going? You ain't got to do Ooh. none of that stuff. You could just be yourself and be chill. Be just, it's just a vibe, man. So yeah, nobody's, I appreciate nobody, that. Nobody's saying be Joe Button out here, but just be real. <laughs> <laughs> just be real. <laughs> but now, since since y'all been doing the podcast, what has been your least favorite part about it? Oh. McCann, I'll let you go ahead because you you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, the least favorite part about it is probably just like um, I. I don't know. It's not like a super negative thing, but like I hate like not doing things on like the right time. Like uh, especially like when we first started off and like, you know, we would just post and it would be like, oh, yeah, sorry, we couldn't do it tonight. And just that type of thing, like, you know, not being able to meet some expectations and things like that. You know, sometimes videos, you know, coming out later than expected or um, different things, you know. Like, I don't know, I, I I try and be like a perfectionist. So like when, especially when we first started and all that type of stuff, like trying to make sure, okay, you know, we have to do, you know, we, we started off and it was like very structured and things like that. We ended up, you know, going more open, but like yeah. just overall, just like, I don't know. I feel like my least favorite part is disappointing people. I don't even think we disappointed very many people, but <laughs> um, I, I don't know, disappointing myself in terms of like quality and things like that. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's probably my least favorite part, but it doesn't happen too often. So, no, I feel you, and, and I think with that, um, we, we usually uh, most of the times we're our own biggest critic. Um, so, like you said, you may not have been disappointing other people, but you just felt like maybe the work wasn't up to par, up to the standards that you wanted it to be at that given time. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I appreciate that, man. I can respect that. Um, so, we got some fire questions as we always do. So, let's go ahead and get into it. All right, first question came from my boy Trey Five. He said, What's up, Engraven? Hope you and your loved ones are strong, happy, and healthy. I want to talk about the dog mentality from Raven skill position players. Our team has been built to play with a lead, and we do so in many games in the regular season. But in our four recent playoff games, our offense started off so slow, and it seems that they were not ready to play. I see many dogs on our defense like Marcus Peters, Marlon Humphrey, Jimmy Smith, Deshaun Elliott, and Pernell McPhee, and maybe some others too. But the offense is lacking, in my opinion. On offense, I think some dogs are Lamar Jackson, playoff Hollywood Brown, Nick Boyle, and Pat Ricard. I think even Devin Duvernay has the potential to be. Mark Andrews is great, but is he a dog? Uh, Miles Boykin is huge, but I don't see him fighting for those 50-50 balls as he should. I cannot expect Coach Hobbs to get grown men ready to play every single game. I think that you cannot develop a dog mentality in you, and you either have it or not. I want more dogs on offense. What are your thoughts on this concept? I, I can card? take it. I'll, I'll go. Right, we'll go um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, obviously, Ravens football is, is built on that dog mentality. I mean, you look at the historical players, uh, Ray Lewis, Terrell Suggs, Ed Reed. I mean, all, I mean, I could go. I could go for 20 minutes on on, on dogs from the Ravens. <laughs> uh, but, you know, you look at who we have now and, and you know, the, the question obviously brought up the defensive players. Our offensive players, 
I, I wouldn't say playoff Hollywood's a dog. I, I think he's exceptional. I think he's number eight all time in uh, career um, receiving yards per game in the postseason. Um, it, but like, I, I don't see that like dog in him. I just think he's like maybe a baller is a better way to put it. Like, you know, he's not a guy that's dropping the shoulder or anything like that. I think our dogs are, are all in the running game. Um, you know, Gus Edwards, J.K. Dobbins, uh, obviously Pat Ricard, Lamar, I think is a dog. Um, Nick Boyle, pretty much everybody on the offensive line, they're all dogs. But in the playoff games, we haven't been running the football very much. So we don't get to see that dog mentality coming out. Um, you know, we're not getting nasty. We're not doing anything like that. Instead, all of a sudden in the playoff games, uh, whether it was the Lamar's first Chargers game, whether it was um, the Titans game or the other Titans game or the Bills game, we were throwing the ball a lot and we weren't utilizing our dogs. So I think, you know, if we want to see the dogs on the field, we got to use the dogs on the field. Uh, we don't got to just uh, keep them chained up uh, to the fence post. Yeah, I like that. All right, go ahead. Man. Now, um, what, your, what, what Trey Five said, um, I'm going to say this. I didn't play football. I'm the nicest person off the field. But you put me on the field, I would talk about your mama. <laughs> I'll talk about your girlfriend. I'm going to talk about whoever. Because at the end of the day, it's 90% mental and 10% physical. I remember I, I, I talked so bad to somebody. I, I told the ref, I said, listen, ref, this boy hold me. I'm going to slap I'm going to slap I'm going to slap him. I'm going to slap his helmet now. Watch this. And I, and I got into it. I got into dude here so bad, he started help, holding me. I was playing defensive end. So I said, I smacked, I smacked, I smacked this helmet. How many, how many went sideways? I said, ref, I told you to tell this man stop holding me. Now, now the whole game changed. So to tell me you can't, to tell me you can't tell a grown man, or you t you tell me they don't have a dog in you, I, I find that a little crazy. Because at the same day, when you're playing football, it, it is a man sport. It is a dangerous sport. So I don't feel mm -hmm. like you know you gonna be. Able, I don't feel like you are gonna be out there like um the guy off the longest yard that took the estrogen pills. Hey man, you you know you, you made a great block. No, it's not. It's none of that. When you're in between the lines, especially especially down and dirty, you gonna always have that fight and you gonna always have that dog in you. But the thing is, are you gonna beat that man across from you? So you know, when it comes to the offensive side of the ball, we've had we've had had them dogs from Steve Smith Senior, uh, Derek Mason, Anquan Bolden. Uh, the, the the list can go on. Todd Heath, Shannon Sharp. I mean, as a tight end. You don't see to me uh, tight ends talk as much That's talk true. as they did, like Shannon Sharp. Sharp. Mm -hmm. So you know, and it, and we had and we had running backs. Everybody forgot about Priest Holmes, uh, Jamal Lewis, even mm -hmm. the fullbacks was carrying games. So to tell me um, that we don't have the dogs, the game has evolved. The game has changed. The game is not as physical. It's more about the money side. So if you want to be real about it, the only people that I see, you know, especially from a wide receiver point in the NFL, that's like a dog mentality, is AJ Brown and Debo Samuels. You you're not finding too many more Andre Johnsons, Megatrons, you know. I mean, granted, we still got DeAndre Hopkins in the league, but hey, you know, he's not added, really? he's not added to our um, he's not added to the Ravens. I mean, you got Keenan Allen's, you know, smooth the smoothest rock running one of the best hands. Even though he can't stay healthy, he's not added to the Ravens. And you got to think about it, the coaching. Because of some of the coaching, we haven't been able to develop a wide receiver in years. Now, I'm hoping it's different with T. Martin and Keith Williams. But, um, you know, it, 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 it's, it's all about the culture and the, and the locker room. And the Ravens, when it comes down to the Ravens, we all know Ravens football is ground and pound, shut them up with uh, – Shut them up with a hard-nosed defense. Now, do I feel like it could be a balance this year? I definitely feel like that. You know, from watching Lamar, you know, go out there and rock out with Marquise and Mark Andrews and Sammy Watkins and things of that nature, to Gus Edwards and a J.K. Ray Rice 2.0 um, phenomenon. I feel less. I'm not gonna give. I'm not. I'm not gonna give my my stats on how that's gonna go. But I definitely feel like this season, it's going, it's going to be a wild season. Um, just off the strength of our schedule, just off the strength that, you know, Lamar Jackson and the rest of the team um, has a chip on their shoulder. And the thing is, these guys love playing for Lamar Jackson. Not, not just John Harbaugh. 
it's all about playing for your quarterback. If y'all remember, um, well, maybe you remember engraving with uh, the two the two thousand Super Bowl. Those guys played for Trent Dilfer. Granted, they didn't give him another chance to come back and like you know play a whole sixteen game season, you know. <laughs> But still, you know, the defensive guys, the offensive guys, like, well, you know, when it came to Sunday, he played lights out. He let us all, he let us all the way. That's our QB. We trust that man. And I feel like, you know, when people continue seeing, you know, the leaps that Lamar Jackson takes, everybody's going to step up their game. So I really feel like it's based off that one, it's based off that guy. Once you see that guy, he's in, he's in the weight room like this. He's at the practice doing this. Let me step my game up. So I feel like that dog mentality comes by those leaders in the locker room. Next question also came from my guy, Trey Five. He said, I hope all is well with you and the fam. I want to know your thoughts on the Ravens, Mount Rushmore of players. Uh, for me personally, Ray Lewis and Ed Reed are locks. Well, yeah, I think everybody would agree. I also think that Terrell Suggs should be as well. But the fourth person is tough. Uh, between Jonathan Ogden, Marshall Yonder, Lodi Nada, Justin Tucker, uh, I might go yonder, but uh, I want to know your Ravens players, Mount Rushmore, and what Lamar Jackson will have to accomplish to take one of their spots in your eyes. Um, mm. Now, uh, oh, yeah, Mount Rushmore is just four people. So, yeah, Ray Lewis and Air Reed for sure. I think you got to throw Jonathan Ogden in there too. Um, that fourth spot, wow, that is tough because you got, yeah, Terrell Suggs. Um, mm, even – Conversation, uh, because I know he was like a roller coaster, but he did win that Super Bowl. His his Joe Flacco, um, mm, now that that's that's tough. That's a tough question for me. So I'll I'll skip that one. I'm gonna go to the second one. He said, "What do you think Lamar Jackson has to do to take <laughs> to take one of those spots?" I think for Lamar Jackson to earn his earn his spot on Mount Rushmore, I think literally the only thing he would have to do would be to win the Super Bowl. That would be it because. And again, this ain't no offense to Flacco. I know some people like to be like, oh, no, it ain't no offense to Flacco. If Lamar wins a Super Bowl, then he already trumps Joe Flacco in success as Ravens quarterback and accomplishments as Ravens quarterback. Because with him, he obviously got the MVP. Not only the MVP, but he got the unanimous MVP. Only other person who got that was Brady. And that guy's been kind of successful over the years. Um, but with Lamar Jackson, just his impact on his team, like Flacco, um, he had obviously had a big impact on the team. He gave us consistency at the quarterback position. And what I mean when I say that, we knew every year, as long as Flacco was here, ever since he started starting in 2008 when Troy Smith got his tonsillitis, we knew that Flacco was going to be our starter. Every year going into the season, we know, okay, we got our starting quarterback. We got that guy. That's our franchise quarterback. We got him. Um, but you didn't always know what kind of play you were going to get. You didn't always know what to expect. Now, Joe Flacco, he did his thing. And, and then after a couple of years, playoff Joe Flacco was something serious. It was crazy. Um, but with Lamar, this guy, like, it's just what he has done for the team to take them from where they were headed to. In that 2018 season at four and five, when things were not looking good, and to literally completely turn them around. And for Lamar Jackson, no matter what's going on around Lamar Jackson, um, it's crazy because as a Raven fan, you almost feel like we always in any game and that we could like rock with anybody, no matter what's going on around them, no matter who the receivers are, no matter the offensive line. No matter what it is, even though we want that to be better around Lamar Jackson, we still feel like as long as we got Lamar, hey, we messing with anybody, anyone well, except the Chiefs sometimes. But we messing with pretty much anybody. Uh, but all I think he would need to do would be to win a Super Bowl. So, so who who is y'all Ravens round Mount Rushmore, and what do y'all feel like Lamar would need to do to get a spot on there? Oh man, uh, Mount Rushmore. Uh, I think I think the first two are are pretty obvious in, in Ray Lewis and Ed Reed. I would throw Suggs on there, um, and and then I'd throw Jonathan Ogden right now. But I think you hit it on the the nail on the head, just saying you know they need to win a Super Bowl, uh, or Lamar needs to win a Super Bowl to get on there. Just because you look at the guys that are on there already, they all have an MVP. Uh, or a defensive player of the year or a Super Bowl, except for Jonathan Ogden, but you know, 
yeah, first absolutely. first pick by the Ravens uh, Hall of Famer, that type of thing. Uh, I think that's good enough. Uh, but uh, I think if you won a Super Bowl and then also having the unanimous MVP while also being like he would be the guy. Um, you know, when Terrell Suggs won the Super Bowl, he wasn't really the guy of the Ravens. Um, obviously, he was very good, but they're, you know, he had Ed Reed and he had Ray Lewis with him. Uh, so I think, you know, if Lamar's the guy and he wins the Super Bowl, um, he's already got that MVP award. I, I think he'll be on that Mount Rushmore. Um, gee, Mount Rushmore. Um, I'm going to just keep I'm gonna just keep it old school, honestly, man. I got to go. Of course, we're going to know Ray Lewis and Ed Reed. You know, you got to go with those guys from the year. Um, I'm definitely going to take J.O. Um, and underrated, I'm going to take the most underrated running back on our team. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Jamal Lewis. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, I mean, I, I love I love a good run game. And in and, and those early 2000s, it was all about having a bruising back. And, you know, for the size of, of Jamal Lewis and the way he ran and how he, you know, he broke the records and everything, man, he contributed a lot when we didn't have some of the best quarterback play. So, you know, I, I definitely got to add him to the Mount Rushmore. Now, if we okay. – now, for me, for L- Lamar Jackson to get on Mount Rushmore, granted, he's already got the MVP status. Um, mm-hmm. He would have to win another MVP for me and also Super Bowl. Or okay. if he wins the Super Bowl, he has to, win- he has to be the MVP of the Super Bowl to get, to get in there. It's, unfortunately for him being the quarterback that he is and the caliber that he brings, he has to continue to take it up a notch because he, mm-hmm. he's going to be – it's something one of my teachers told me back in high school. Um, you're going to be highly uh, scrutinized and unfairly criticized, something like that. And mean it means like it don't matter what you do in life, it's always someone that's going to be looking at the negatives. And then unfortunately for Lamar Jackson, all through his life of playing quarterback, he's always, oh, you can do this, you can do that. Granted, you know, to become better at your craft, you always can work at your craft. But for the simple fact that, you know, he stood his ground in the interviews during, the, um, during that uh, 2018 NFL draft and said, well, you know, hey, I'm a quarterback. Oh, are you going to try a wide receiver? I think I told you last time, if you ain't here, I'm playing quarterback. <laughs> uh, in, high, in college, I got, I, got a, I, got a, I got a full scholarship to play quarterback for Louisville. Remember that? Yeah, so that's, I, think that's what I'm gonna, I think that's what I'm going to do in the NFL. So um, I definitely feel like, you know, for him to get on that Mount Rushmore for the Ravens and the, and get that like that Hall of Fame jacket, he has to continue doing one up. And the, and the great thing about him, he's so young, so you know he hasn't hit that plateau. He hasn't even hit his prom yet, so he's going to continue growing. So anybody that says, "Oh, he's inaccurate," "Oh, he can't he can't throw the deep ball," stuff like this, um, Peyton Manning was the same way. Uh, Tom Brady, he wasn't so so much accurate. Um, these guys learned the game. These guys grew into the game. And Lamar Jackson is going to keep on growing to the game. And he's going to become one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. And I'm not just saying it because I'm a Ravens fan. I'm just saying because this young man has a work ethic. And this young man, you know, knows how to uh, produce on the field. The next question came from my boy Brian P. He said, uh, do you think the two corners that we got in the draft are just for depth? Or is it to tell Jimmy Smith and Tavon Young, you know, to up their game? Uh, and the fact that those two are very injury prone. Um, you're talking about, uh, Wade and, uh, the third Steve, round. Steve. Yeah, Steve's. Um, Steve. those two, it's, I mean, with, with Jimmy Smith and, and Tavon Young, yeah, they, they have been injury prone, but I, I think it's just Raven's way of staying ready. You, you gotta stay ready. So you ain't gotta get ready. And with Jimmy Smith, excellent player, Tavon Young, excellent player, but their health has not been their wealth. They, they have been missing a lot of time and, you can't go into the seat. Ravens know more than anybody. Like you could have the best depth in the secondary, but things could change quickly, super quick. We saw it last year. We saw it the year before. We've seen it plenty of years where the depth at cornerback can change very fast in a bad way. If one guy goes down and stuff can get ugly. So I think they were just more so equipping themselves uh, to be prepared. What about y'all? Yeah, I think I think to be prepared, not as much even for this season, but also just the future. Um, you look at Tavon Young, how much longer is he going to be with the Ravens? I mean, I don't think the Ravens front office is looking at him as, as a cornerstone for the future because 
he like Jimmy Smith when he you know he's played like oh yeah he played eight games he played nine games he missed a fair amount but he he played a bit Tavon Young is like yeah he played one season for us pretty much um, and he played very well for us uh, but you know ever since he got that contract has not been able to do anything but taking up a lot of money so I don't think that they'll retain him for the future so getting a guy in in Sean Wade who honestly could have been a top 10 pick in the NFL draft if he had stayed at the slot cornerback's position at Ohio State rather than transitioning to the outside to be that replacement guy who's who's been able to stay pretty healthy. Mm-hmm. And then Brandon Stevens, a guy who you know we're able to look at as I think will be a free safety for us. Um, and then, then comes into question whether or not the Ravens want to rock out with Deshaun Elliott, who I'm a big fan of, but uh, he may want a lot of money and, you know, we already got Chuck Clark running the defense. So it's going to be tough for us to move on from Chuck Clark unless we can give the mic over to, to PQ or, or Malik Harrison or my underdog story. Uh, Dalen Hayes, I think, could eventually take it over. But um, all any of those guys, I think it, it's looking at the future for who we want to start at the position. It's kind of the same thing with uh, undrafted free agent uh, our Darius Washington, you know, bringing him in like. We're like, it may not be a ton of playing time this year, but they're looking at how much longer they're going to be having. Uh, even a guy like I didn't even mention Jimmy Smith, but how much longer are we going to have him? We've had t- talks of cutting him in the off season. Like the last three years we've been talking, is this the year? So uh, yeah. I think it's going to be, you know, for the future, I think utilizing them a lot more, but I guess some depth this year is, is always nice. Never have too much depth. It's definitely um I, it's definitely um a move towards the future. Um Sean Wade, I feel like if he shows his stuff, Tavion Tavon Young may be out the door. Um I mm. love Tavion Young, he's a Maryland guy, went to Temple, yeah. everything. I mean he showed it that he can ball out, but at the same token, you know, like McConnell said, you know, he's he's been taking up money, he's been taking up, you know, a a, a roster spot, unfortunately. And um, you know, <laughs> Me personally, if, if I'm with Martindale, you know, I'll find ways to, you know, keep Jimmy Smith and Tavion Young in um in rotation, possibly moving them to the free safety position, you know, just for longevity. Uh, because both of them, in my opinion, they can cover maybe the um the second best wide receiver still, or even possibly, you know, a tight end and you know, either get you a pass breakup or even a possible interception. I still feel like I definitely still feel like Jimmy Smith has that uh playmaker ability. But drafting Brandon Stevens in the third round, um, just, you know, going from a four-star running back from UCLA to making a transition over to, well, you know what? There's a lot of running backs. There's a lot of running backs that are probably going to get drafted for me. Let me go somewhere where I can play corner and where they can develop me. And he made that transition. Granted, he doesn't have a lot of film, but he's a big guy. He plays man-to-man. He can do the pass breakups. He got one interception. But he's an athlete. Mm. You know, you play he played high at the uh opposite position on defense. And you gotta have some type of smarts to be, you know, the number one corner. You know, you gotta have some type of athletic ability, some good hips, you know, mm. to be able to follow those number one wide receivers. So, you know, I feel like that just they saw they saw a, a diamond in the rough, Ravens way. Don't know too much about the guy, but they see they can develop a, a, a possible Pro Bowl or a possible star, so mm. you know I'm looking forward to you know him seeing the field, you know. So yeah, yeah. I definitely see uh, future moves, and I'm I'm looking forward to it. And so this next question sort of takes us back a little bit, and it came from my guy Philip B. He said, uh, "I ain't graven big fan of the channel. Hope all is well. Oh yeah, everything is good." He said, "Who do you think won the Orlando Brown Jr. trade?" The Chiefs or the Ravens? I understand we Ravens got two first-round picks, but I'm also certain EDC was kicking himself for not having a second-round pick. A lot of talent went in the second round that the Ravens could have used to put us over the hump. While I do think the Ravens had a solid draft, the Chiefs definitely addressed their biggest needs this offseason, which was the offensive line by getting Orlando Brown Jr. and drafting Creed Humphrey. Peace and love and hashtag team keep it clean. And I think... The Creed Humphrey pick, I'm like 99% sure that was the Ravens' second-round pick that the Chiefs used to get Creed Humphrey, the center. Um, so <laughs> who, who do y'all think won the Chiefs and the Ravens' Orlando Brown Jr. trade? I got to go with well, the Carl, Ravens. You had that one. 
<laughs> yeah, I got to go with the Ravens. I Initially, I was a big fan of it. Then I remember uh, Joshua and I, we brought on a good friend of ours. His name's AJ, a huge Chiefs fan. And he was he was pissed at the trade. He was not happy with it whatsoever. And he convinced really? me. More that, yeah, it was very surprising. We brought him on. We were expecting him to, you know, debate like, oh, the Chiefs totally won. He was like, no, this is horrible. Um, but for me, I, I I really like the trade because of the the extra pieces that we were able to get, um, you know, in the draft. I don't remember if it was Ben Cleveland or Brandon Stevens, which one we got. Like, you know, one of the guy, many guys that we got. You know, we got a couple mm -hmm. of extra guys. But for me, Orlando Brown Jr., the drop off from him to Alejandro Villanueva, which is what it would have been because he would have been our right tackle is not that significant of a drop. Um, obviously, Orlando Brown Jr., much younger, uh, has right. a significantly higher ceiling, can get much better. Mm -hmm. uh, but we only would have had him one year. So how much better will he be in the next year? Uh, but he's a similar player to Villanueva. We're getting back Ronnie Stanley. Um, and for us to go out and get uh, a first-round pick who we drafted, which is Adafe Away, who I think is – honestly the perfect counter for Orlando Brown Jr. who struggles against speed off the edge. Now we got yeah. maybe the fastest edge rusher in the NFL now. Um, <laughs> maybe maybe we just did that to be able to get some extra sacks on Patrick Mahomes coming off the edge <laughs> by uh, big braining uh, the Chiefs. Um, so I'm a big fan of it because – and I like who we got. We, we were able to address wide receiver and edge rusher, which were the two biggest needs that most Ravens fans felt were uh, the biggest needs, especially at the beginning of the offseason. Oh yeah, yeah, and um, with uh, with the Ravens uh, giving up Orlando Brown Jr., one of the things that was good for them, uh, more so obviously in the long run, was that he was a third round pick, and to be able to flip a well, sort of flip a flip of third round pick for a first round pick, while well, giving up a second round pick too, but being able to get a first round pick for somebody that you got in the third round, that's that's a come up. That's definitely a come up. Now, you did lose a second round pick because you had to give that up, but you did gain a first round pick. And I, I think one of the things that surprised me the most from the, the trade just as a whole uh, wasn't even the trade itself, but what would happen after the trade, what happened in the draft. Because I was like 99% sure. I'm like, oh, there ain't no way Ravens are going to pick two first round picks. I just don't. I know they did it with uh, Lamar and Hayden Hurst, but I just, this year, Eric DaCosta, nah, he, he wants to get more picks. Um, but he uh he sure fooled me. That liar's luncheon. He gave us a lot of smoke screens and all these different signals and stuff because he was like, "Yeah, y'all, I'm insulted by that y'all are insulted, <laughs> insulting our wide receivers and all that." And he was talking about, "Oh yeah, we we want more draft picks." And I'm thinking like, "Yeah, of course he wants more draft picks." It's Eric DaCosta. He learned from Ozzie Newsom. They love all of the draft picks that they could possibly get. So I'm like, ain't no way they about to pick two first round picks. They, they trading down from one of them for sure. They might pick at 27, but 31, they trading down and they didn't. They stayed right where they were at. Uh, but I was glad that they did uh, because for you to be able to have your pick, have your selection uh, of all the talent that's available right there within two two picks in the top in the first round. That's that's big. That's really big. So I was uh, I was glad that they did that.